Hello Answers Now family and friends. Welcome back. It's me, Adam Dreyfus, your friendly neighborhood chief science officer and co-founder of Answers Now. What exactly is Answers Now? Well, it's a way to connect you directly to your own board certified behavior analyst um, so that you can get applied behavior analysis, uh, which is uh, essentially the gold standard for interventions uh, in terms of uh, remediating some of the challenges of uh, autism. So one of the huge problems that people have, and the reason that we founded this company, uh, is that it's really hard to get expert uh, assistance. Um, maybe you have an in-home provider, uh, but you're getting sort of junior level people that generally are the ones that you interact with. Maybe your kid goes to a school, which is fantastic. Um, but as someone who runs a school uh, for children diagnosed with autism, I know that even if your kid is in one of these really great schools, you're still feeling really isolated really stressed out and really overwhelmed. Uh, so Answers Now is all about putting a uh, expert in your pocket. Go to getanswersnow.com uh, and find out more about it. We take insurance in Virginia. Um, we are gonna be uh, uh, advancing out of uh, Virginia here pretty shortly. We take Medicaid. Um, so definitely uh, uh, give us a shout um, and we will uh, uh, be there to answer your questions and uh, connect you with your own clinician. Uh, this month's topic, we're doing kind of monthly topics now, uh, is around how to talk to your family about an autism diagnosis. You know, the holidays are coming up. I'm feeling kind of festive. I'm looking a little Santa-like. I've got my red shirt on. Um, so we've got Thanksgiving coming up. We've got Christmas coming up. And uh, for a lot of folks, um, uh, that's a challenge, right? Like, how do, I, how do I tell my parents that my uh, son or daughter is diagnosed with autism? And what does that mean? Um, so... Uh, stick to the basics, right? So autism is a neurodevelopmental disorder, uh, affects about one in 70 or so kids in the United States. It's becoming more and more prevalent. Um, the good news is that it's very sensitive to expert intervention. So you want to get intervention, you want to get it early. Um, whether that's someone coming in your home, going to a center, going to a clinic, uh, you can really, really bend the curve of uh, autism. Um, it primarily affects communication, social skills, and there's a behavior piece. And people usually think about the behavior piece like, oh, is that the like autistic upsets? No, it's not the autistic upsets. Um, there aren't autistic upsets. There are upsets that children who are diagnosed with autism have, but there's plenty of uh, children diagnosed with autism that don't have a lot of the behaviors uh, associated with, uh, uh, with an autism uh, diagnosis. Um, so just because it child is diagnosed with autism doesn't mean, oh, they've got all these challenging behaviors. No, many of them don't. Um, doesn't mean they don't have other challenges with communication and social skills. What they mean by behaviors uh, in the diagnosis is repetitive behaviors. Uh, and this is really where family members can come in. We're going to talk a little bit uh, about what can family members do to help out, especially over the holidays as they, they come into town and they really want to genuinely help. Um, but they might have had a bad experience, right? Like they might have uh, spent a few minutes with... Uh, uh, with your son or daughter, um, and it went really poorly um, because of their approach would be my main uh, guess as to uh, what had happened, um, or they interfered with something that your son or daughter was uh, doing, um, and they didn't like that, and so it went kind of sideways. So we're going to talk about what um, aunts and uncles and brothers and sisters and cousins and uh, stuff like that can do to make uh, the, the, the holidays a little more uh, bearable for you uh, as a parent. Um, and fruitful for them, so they feel like they're uh, contributing um, and uh, and helping out, because that's uh, what the holidays are all about. Um, it is important to note when people ask. Uh, there's all kinds of disinformation out there about uh, autism. Um, there is no cure for autism. Uh, there's no pill. There's no shot. There's no. We don't have any of that. We don't know what causes autism, so we don't have any idea like what you could have done differently. People get a lot of questions like that. Oh, did you eat something? Did you did you go on vacation? Do you do you are you near a smoker? Um, there's all kinds of uh, um, uh, hypotheses uh, that are out there, uh, but you can feel very comfortable telling your family members. We don't know at this point. I mean, tons of research is being done on this right now. Tons. There's all over the world. People are wanting to crack this one because man, you. Talk about being famous. If you can, uh, if you can come up with the uh, uh, the explanation for uh, where autism comes from or why we're seeing the rates climb as uh, as high as they are, uh, why is it becoming more prevalent? 
um, and even better, some kind of cure, right? Like, a, um, uh, especially if it's a, a fairly easy cure, because right now, the cure is education. There are kids who are diagnosed with autism, even severely impacted kids, and they, um, uh, through, uh, through sort of intensive education, you wouldn't really know it. They might be a little odd, but these days, who isn't a little odd, right? Like we're, we're, uh, we're becoming a nation of people who specialize in things and have very uh, uh, almost singular pursuits sometimes. Um, we used to be uh, much more uh, kind of generalists, and now you run into people who um, know everything there is to know about stamps or everything there is to know about game shows, um, which is a little autistic, which might explain why uh, we've seen uh, uh, the, the, the climb. <laughs> Maybe it's spreading throughout. Um, so I want to talk about the holidays a little bit. So if to have that conversation with your family, um, uh, it's less because they'll, they'll usually focus on, um, kind of the past, like what could you have done differently? As far as we know, there's nothing that you can uh, do differently. There's no way that you can eat. There's no place that you can live. Uh, there's no, uh, set of vitamins that you can, uh, um, uh, eat that, uh, would reduce the chances. Um, you just... Uh, usually find out somewhere between two years and six years uh, as they start sometimes getting into daycares and getting around other kids. Uh, sometimes you can tell pretty early on. Um, there's really, really strong diagnostic tools now that can uh, uh, generally um, identify if a, if a child is uh, uh, will be diagnosed with autism between 18 and uh, 18 months um, and 24 months for sure. Um, there's some great uh, uh, tools out there and Absolutely, the earlier you catch it, the, the better. Um, so what can sort of aunts and uncles and uh, uh, stuff do? So um, we've talked about this a little bit before, but one of the easiest things you can do, now nobody knows these kids better than you, right? The parents or the caregivers. You're the CEOs and the experts on uh, these kids. So you tell them, right? Rather than them coming in like, oh, I've got this, I've got this plan on how I'm going to do it. It's usually a recipe for disaster because uh, if it doesn't go well, then everybody sort of has hard feelings. Um, is give, have them give the child something that they like, um, whether that's uh, uh, like access to their iPad. So if they really like their iPad, have grandma just hand them the iPad. Not at first, like not talk about the iPad, not play with the iPad. Literally just hand it to them. If they like mint Milano cookies, give them a mint Milano cookie. And not just one, right? Not just one thing, not just one time, repeatedly. Because a lot of these kids, their experience of adults is somebody who's coming into my world and taking something away from me. Um, so especially adults they don't see very often. Um, they might not remember you if they haven't seen you in a long time. If they last saw you when they were two and they're now four, there's probably a really strong chance that they don't remember you. Um, and so you want to, you don't want to be a, uh, hey, some, somebody walked in the room and my life got worse. You want to be somebody walked in the room and my life got better. Um, this is a really, really, really common mistake that teachers make and all kinds of uh, people make. You become, because at first the kid doesn't know you from Adam. Uh, it's sort of a joke there. Um, but uh, usually, right, like the kids sitting there, maybe they're on their iPad, maybe they're playing with a toy, maybe they're, um, and someone comes in and takes it away, right, because they need them to do something else. It's bath time, it's dinner time, it's, uh, uh, we got to go run some errands, we got to do something else. Um, and so a lot of their experiences, man, adults bite, right, like this is terrible. Every time an adult comes near me, something bad happens, um, especially adults that they are really unfamiliar with. Because a lot of the times kids uh, diagnosed with autism, they don't get out as much, right? So they don't have as many uh, experiences. They got really, they get really comfortable with uh, mom, dad, brother, sister. And when they do encounter someone else, maybe they're doing an assessment on them, or it's a doctor, or a dentist, or something that is not good for them, right? Like they, oh, am I going to get a shot? Someone going to look in my mouth? Um, is uh, uh, am I gonna have to sit in a chair while this guy throws flashcards at me and asks questions? So um, you just wanna give them something. Give them something for nothing. Um, and what that'll do is that'll sort of raise your value in their world. So the next time you come wandering in the room, they're like, oh, look at that, That's uh, that person uh, 
that person equals something good happening for me. Um, uh, the other one that's uh, pretty sneaky, <laughs> but really effective is parallel play. So if they're sitting on the floor playing with blocks, instead of getting down and like trying to talk to them or grabbing their blocks or like you would do with a nor uh, not normal, a typically developing kid where you can sort of come in and start playing with them pretty because you because you know the game or you understand the kind of the passes kids on the spectrum um because of their deficits sometimes is a little bit more of a challenge right so you can start with just parallel play so if they're playing with blocks you just play with blocks next to them don't talk to them don't ask them a bunch of questions uh don't uh, uh certainly don't interfere with the blocks that they're working on because they're working on something that uh, is uh, important to them um but they will notice that you are engaging in a similar activity right next to them. Um, and this will, they'll be a little curious about that. They'll like, uh, oh, let me kind of move over there. Let me see what's kind of going on. So it kind of draws them towards you a little bit. Um, and you run not much of a risk of having a bad experience, right? So hand them something, parallel play next to them. Um, if they can, if they've got good language skills, it might be a little exhausting, but they probably have an affinity, right? It could be space travel, it could be dinosaurs, it could be Minecraft, um, it could be My Little Pony, you name it, right? But that's their thing, and that's what they wanna talk about. Talk to them about that. And if you can, and the mom or the dad says to you like, oh my gosh, like little Johnny, uh, all he wants to talk about is uh, uh, cameras, right? It is not a bad idea to bone up on your cameras and learn a little something about cameras. So when you come to the table, you might have a little something there that uh, Johnny hasn't heard before and you will have enormous value for Johnny. Um, oh yeah, yeah, I was just reading about the uh, 1942 Nikon uh, FJR uh, uh, that they only made eight of. Uh, bam, like what? You speak my language? Let's talk cameras all day um, is another sort of useful thing. So give them something for nothing parallel play, definitely learn as much as you can about their affinities. Uh, and the last one is respite. There are a few things that will be more powerful for the mom or the dad or whoever the caregiver is if you can give them kind of a break. And a lot of people get really nervous. Whoa, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to deal with autism. I, I, I'm not sure what will happen. Follow those kind of basic simple rules. Keep it simple. Do stuff they like. Talk about what they want. You should be all right. And by respite, it can even be 15 minutes, 30 minutes. Um, a lot of these parents don't have almost any time to do anything, to go grab a shower, to go to the store without um, bringing their child. Um, and so that's a really huge gift that you can give them is uh, a little bit of respite. And if you could handle an overnight, oh, phew, like that's above and beyond. Uh, gives them a chance to kind of charge their batteries. They will never, ever, ever forget the gift of an overnight uh, of respite. Um, so uh, these are some nice sort of tips and tricks for the holiday season as uh, hopefully um, we're staying small and not uh, traveling around too much. Um, but uh, this is the time of the year that uh, um, uh, we tend to see family even um, in the midst of a pandemic and uh and uh following all the rules um so there you've got your tips for thanksgiving and christmas and kind of hanging out um ask the parents like what do they want what do they like uh, especially if it's little right like they, oh they really like sour cream and onion potato chips just give them a potato chip every time you walk by i know it sounds kind of funny um but if somebody if you were just sitting in your office and every time somebody came by they gave you something that you liked you would start paying attention to when that person was coming by and then try to engage them uh, uh, a little bit. Um, so uh, something for nothing, um, parallel play. Parallel play is a really, really powerful tool and a great way to kind of slide into um, uh, somebody's world uh, in a way that doesn't uh, overwhelm them and result in uh, a bad experience uh, for both of you. Um, respite and talk about their affinities. Oh my gosh, that's, there's almost nothing better you can do. Um, it might seem counterintuitive because you're like, oh, they talk about them all the time. Right. They like to. Um, so that's it for uh, today. Um, we uh, appreciate you coming in here and checking us out. Make sure you go to getanswersnow.com and uh, find out more about us and uh, sign up if need be. Um, we are accepted, ex ex yeah. 
uh, accepting insurance uh, uh, in the in Virginia as well as uh, Medicaid. Um, and feel free to contact us at any time. Um, we are here to help. And uh, happy Thanksgiving and a happy holiday season to you.